now that I'm finally back in my apartment, I'm going to finish my original parts haul from last month. I went, I got an order in from Jamco, as well as I went to Sears, and I went to Radio Shack to buy some components for the various other projects that I have going on. Let's see what I got here from Jamco. Let's get all this packaging out. Organize some stuff here, group some things that belong to each other. We'll start off with these right here. Uh, this is some fuse holders. I got four. They're going to be for the four different rails that I have on my benchtop power supply. So here are the fuse holders. They look pretty nice. Uh, you know, pretty thick plastic, nice mounting screw, nice mounting screw hole, good good tabs, you either solder to them or you could use quick connects it looks like. So that's that, that's kind of a nice thing and they're CSA rated as you can see right there. Very good. Uh, I'm happy with these. Put them off to the side. The fast acting fuses, uh, you know, just kind of general fuses. One's 10 amp, the others are 5 amp. Always get extras, so I got eight of them. Next, uh, we have, I got barrel jacks, so I'll take them out. As you can see, what they look like. These were fairly expensive ones. I think they were close to like $4, uh, but they are panel mount. Let's see, here we go. And they do have a very nice body on them and nice connections. One is a 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 millimeter, and the other is a 2.5 by 5.5 millimeter because they are so hard to tell apart from each other, and uh, it's just good good to have both. This is a bus bar that has how many connections? Six lane bus bar. This is going to be help cable management out on the benchtop power supply, keep things neat and organized, not have wires crossing over each other. It's going to help out a lot. And it's nice. I believe this is the Jamco Value Pro type, if I'm not mistaken. Which uh, so it was fairly inexpensive. It was you know under five dollars, I believe. This is a rotary encoder and knob for the rotary encoder. Not just a regular quadrature rotary encoder. It's 24 uh, detents per, per revolution. No tactile button click though. It is just the rotary encoder. This is going to help me uh, just better prototype uh, my input method. And uh, the knob that I got, just a turned piece of aluminum really. Uh, it, it, it's got some heft to it which is kind of nice to see. And there, there you can see the adjustment screw that, uh, this is in a D-shaped attachment hole, so you have to use the screw to tighten it, uh, tighten it against the encoder shaft. But it's, it's fairly large, it's, you know, it's about three quarters of an inch. It's about three quarters of an inch in diameter, I would say. Uh, it's got a nice indicator there. So this is a lot nicer than the last knob that I had. Uh, I think it is. Just some, some bling. Always gotta have bling on your projects. It adds you know, horsepower and faster electron transfer. Yeah, it totally does. I have an interesting thing that I saw. It's kind of like a fuse, but shaped like a fuse. There are six small LEDs in there. They are white. This is a 12 volt, as it says right there, 12 volt lamp. And there's a plastic housing around here, but you know, I'm not sure how bright it'll be. It's kind of interesting. It fits inside this housing here, which is nothing more than pretty much just a fuse housing that fits the little, whoop, there it goes. Let's click it in and you rotate it. That's kind of cool. You can rotate it and angle it in case you, you can't quite get the angle in your project. And it, it's it's fair, it's made fairly well. It's got a nice mounting hole there. You can see. 
Uh, tabs, of course, they look about, these tabs look about the right size to either put a quick connect on or solder to them if you like, depending on what you like to do. So I'm kind of interested to see this. This is cool sort of thing. I, I'd hate to hide it. I would obviously think if you were going to use one of these, you'd want to display it in some manner or another. So, kind of interesting to see uh, how this will work. Lastly is sort of a, something that I was very interested in uh, is this little guy. This is a LED strip. If I can unpackage it, why, why would they do this? If I can find the tape thing. This is kind of an interesting piece. Let's get a look at that. So you can see it, it's an LED strip. You can see all the little dots in the center. Those are LEDs. Those are the, you know, the junction. Uh, so this is going to be kind of cool. As you see, it says one watt. It is 3.7 volts at 300 milliamps. So that's what it was rated for. Uh, this could be kind of interesting. I like it. It's very thin. This back piece is a piece of aluminum. Uh, that's actually the heat sink, and it says if you're going when you know running it at full power like that, it needs to be on a very good heat sink surface. So I will have to figure that out. And you can see the little cutouts there, presumably to mount screws, which look like maybe they're an M2. I don't even think an M3 would fit in that radius. This is everything I got from Radio Shack. All right, I got four sets of these very nice looking binding posts. Red and black pairs uh, for the benchtop power supply. And they look really nice. They look professional. Rated 10 amps, 125 volt AC. So they'll be good for what I'm doing. I have at maximum 10 amp fuses. I'm not really trying to blow my apartment up. Then, if you have Banana Jacks, Radio Shack brand, they, they look to be fairly good quality. This part just unscrews and then you could attach your cable through here, solder it, put it back in, and uh, screw it back in. So I got two, a pair, make some cables out of that. I forgot I had these in my hand, so I ended up buying them anyway large alligator clips as well as smaller alligator clips and yeah more alligator jumpers i was gonna make my own then i saw these for cheaper and i forgot i had the other ones in my hand this is 14 inch jumper leads there are how many of them are oh 10 so i think they're a good buy two general purpose Printed circuit boards, you know, just you know, make some small circuits, put them in enclosures. Not sure what I'm gonna use them for, but they were a dollar and something. I don't know. It's only ridiculously cheap, so I got them because I, I will be needing them. Uh, this one's especially good for breaking out all the pins on on a micro on some sort of microcontroller or ch just general chip. Uh, so that's gonna be these should be pretty useful. Coming up. From the Sears camp, butane. Well, now why would you need butane? Well, because I splurged and got this. Which, if you didn't know, is a Weller Portisol butane powered soldering iron. That does it for my parts haul. I hope this keeps your interest. Got a lot of fun stuff coming up.